Um, thanks again for joining us today. Um, my name is Blair Murphy. I'm the Curator of Exhibitions at Arlington Arts Center, and I'm really happy to be here today with Aveta Sanyong Kang, whose work is part of our online exhibition by proxy. Um, I mentioned this a minute ago, but for anyone who's gotten on, just so you know, we are going to be recording the talk today. So if you are on video or you ask any questions, that will be in the recording. Um, and that will be up on our website later uh, when we do the Q&A at the end. If you you want to unmute yourself and ask questions, you're welcome to do that. If you'd rather put them in chat, you can do that as well. Um, so a quick introduction to Arlington Arts Center, um, especially for folks who maybe haven't been to the space. Uh, we are a contemporary arts center based in Arlington, Virginia. Uh, we have a building in Arlington and for the most, you know, typically are doing programming around our building. We have an exhibitions program, an education program, and a studio residency program. Um, since we've been closed to the public in March, in mid-March, we've been doing online programs for all three of our the components of our regular programming. So we've been doing online workshops and classes for kids and adults. We're doing online summer camp this summer, and we're, we've also been doing online programs for our residency and exhibitions program. In early July, we launched By Proxy, which is our first online exhibition. The AAC website is the hub for the show, but the work is dispersed across platforms. So there's work on the website, there's work that's been appearing on our Instagram feed, um, there are performances and artist talks like this one taking place on Zoom. So it kind of exists in multiple spaces online and is mostly work that's meant to be viewed online. So it's been um, an interesting experiment for us in a sort of new way of working. Um, this Saturday, August 8th, we're hosting a performance as part of the show by the artist duo My Husband. It's their second performance as part of the exhibition. And then next Saturday, August 15th, um, artist Jeremy Hutchins Hutchison is launching a new video work, which is part of his ongoing project, Dear Mr. Zuckerberg, which has also been appearing on the AAC Instagram feed this week and next week. Um, so those are just a couple of the upcoming programs for the show. We're also doing an artist talk with Max Glover in a couple weeks, which will be one of the last programs. So I hope people have a chance to check some of those out as well. Um, but I'm happy to be here today with Aveta, um, who's uh, interactive performance project, Tender Hands, you might have seen on AAC's Instagram account over the last few weeks. Um, her work, Proposition One Hands, is also on the AAC website as part of the show. And Aveta is an interdisciplinary visual and video artist and writer currently based in Montreal, Canada. She studied film directing in South Korea and earned her MFA in film production at Concordia University in Canada. She's presented short films and videos at film festivals and in galleries around the world, including in South Korea, Canada, Germany, and the United States. And in 2016, she was shortlisted for the Simon Blaise Award in Canada. Uh, she recently published a poetry book entitled Absent Seats and is a co-founding member of the artist collective Quite Ourselves. Um, Aveta is gonna talk to us a little bit about her work and the specifically Tender Hands, which was in the exhibition, and, um, and Proposition One, which is also in the show, and then we'll have some time for questions. So I'll let Aveta yeah. take it away. Hi, everyone. So good to see you all. <laughs> yeah, so I thank you for the introduction, Blair. And I think I'll share some of the, the work presented as part of the, this group exhibition, and also uh, I'll share uh, some of my recent work, which is related to a preposition one hands and also tender hands. Can everyone see it? Yeah. Uh, yes, I think so. To begin with, this work, Preposition One Hands, which is, uh, which is presented at AAC, was uh, created before this pandemic. Uh, so this work was uh, meant to be a participatory for installation where audiences can pair up and play the game instructed in the video piece in the gallery setting. But it's now impossible, you know, considering this pandemic. <laughs> So that's why this work also contains a poster where uh, that you could that resembles um, to an instructive poster you see at a physiotherapy session. Uh, sorry. 
No, I don't think I'm Sorry, sorry. Yeah, so I'll keep going. And uh, this pass want to bring a set of connectivity that has been forgotten between people by allowing them to touch and hold their hands and feel the warmth exchanging during its participation. So this, the image that you're seeing right now is a poster I mentioned. So there, there are texts as well and there's some dr the drawings of hands uh, whose motions are exactly the same as the, the one you see in the video. And this piece is anchored in the banal Korean children's game called Make Electricity on Your Hands in the hope to subvert the banality of the game into a sort of representative window where people could examine the touchstone of human relationships and find some possibilities to ease social anxiety. On top of that, the idea of games implies that there must be a finishing point uh, where games and uh, players sort of say goodbye to each other. So I guess this aspect also reflects the way I see heartwarming moments I gain from social relationships because all relationships have to finish at some point, somehow. Yet, as you are seeing right now, this video only contains a close-up shots because I think uh, just to amplify those temporalities of the moment in order to just say that it's okay, even if we are gonna say goodbye at some point. So, oh, I think PowerPoint crashed. <laughs> So as, you, as you've seen, both the video and the poster contain not only images, but also text like my other work because I tend to like, uh, involve, like working with text a lot. So I think I treat my text as a series of poems that want to sort of rearrange the form of instructions as a medium. Um, especially the text in, uh, in my recent work, including Preposition One Hands, attempt to sort of imagine the fundamental realm of understanding anxiety in a very vague and abstract way. Uh, for the fact that, in my opinion, each individual's anxiety emanates and shapes in reality so differently that it cannot fully you know, be studied by psychiatry or psychoanalysis studies. So I think I want this piece to say that sharing a moment of relief with sincere heart would and could cure individual respective emotional suffering. And this word anxiety has been one of my central ideas in my recent project. The first work I made was this concept was in terms of uncertainty, which is you're now seeing under PPT. So this work was also um, created to be a participatory work that invites a person to sit and play with the ball while watching the video. The ball here, this ball, the red ball, is imagined to be capable of measuring the severity of one's anxiety if 
his audience sitting in front of the video and then holding the bowl can follow the text and the motions in the video if they want to measure their anxiety. And then the text. So this video is pretty longer than preposition one hands and then the pace also is much slower. And the, the text now you're seeing is the, is the text accompanying with the intolerance of uncertainty. And uh, this, is, this text is called uh, in, yeah, Instruction to the Ball Measure. So this text are the same text appearing in the video as well. And I wrote and also sort of fictionalized this text based on four standard anxiety written measurement that you can easily find on Google or any other online platforms. So this work was actually created uh, after my lived experience struggling with anxiety. And it was like two years ago and I really struggled with social anxiety. And then I, there was a moment that I really needed to measure how serious my anxiety was. So what I, what I, what I did was just Googling written measurement in Google. And then I found one and I got myself test on my cell phone without like thinking of seeing a doctor or something. And then the result told me that I, my anxiety was not that serious. <laughs> I was, <laughs> it, it told me that I was functional. And then I found that was very a uh, bizarre experience because I, find, I found myself really eased and uh, relieved that my anxiety was not that serious. And then soon after all, I realized uh, how bizarre the experience was and what actually is my anxiety and myself was neither myself nor an expert or therapist but only the letters in the measurement so after all i come to study on anxiety and the psychiatrical uh, purchases and treatment for anxiety so that because i wanted to cross question the simplification of clinical measurement in that sense so uh, the text and the motion in this piece in terms of uncertainty are abstracted to embrace the uh, undefinability of individual emotions. And uh, this third project of mine is called Tender Hands. This is ongoing, my ongoing project. And uh, you might have seen some of uh, live performances on the Instagram account. Uh, since the pandemic, I've been writing instructions that hopefully ease anxiety of hands also and could also sort of discover new notions of utilizing your hands because of the pandemic. So this, I think this uh, instructions challenge the premise of instructions as a medium because uh, instructions are supposed to be easily understood and very straightforward, right? For uh, instructors to easily follow because they don't have to, they should not imagine what it, these instructions say because that, I guess that's the purpose, very uh, underlying purpose of instructions as a medium. But uh, in tender hands, these instructions are poetic, abstract, and sometimes they do not even require your uh, you know, movement, like motion participations. So that's uh, because I, I want sort of people to, discover how differently they uh, they follow each instruction, although the instructions are the same, but their reactions and their, their movements, you know, should move differently. Uh, so not only for this work, but also other projects of mine, which were presented just before, I observe, I think, people's behaviors and their patterns that interact with uh, banal ob object and their own bodies on an everyday regular basis and merge its solemnness with poetic representation. Yeah.
So I am still writing these instructions and I've been writing so far like 50 instructions so far. So I don't know when I will finish writing them. Should I stop sharing? Uh, yeah, I think I think so. If that's the end. Um, and like I mentioned, the um, Proposition One Hands video is on the Arlington Arts Center website, and then the collection of the fifteen short live performances that Avetta did for Tender Hands on our Instagram is also just went up today. So you can go back and watch all of them um, if you uh, yeah if you'd like to. Um, thanks for sharing, Aveta. Yeah, um, thank you. I think I sort of wanted to also end my sort of presentation mm -hmm. by saying that I think because the, especially with the all strange times and pandemic and every outbreak uh, uprising, uh, the idea of uncertainty really lives close to our life. So I also think that, you know, uh, the uncertainty, some levels of uncertainty always there, lurking and hiding. So I think my, I want my work to just say that it's okay to be uncertain. It's okay to feel the uncertainty. You don't have to be afraid of it. Yeah. yeah. That does seem especially relevant right now. And I think is, I mean, it's something you've been thinking about for a yeah. long time. Mm -hmm. um, it did strike me as you were talking about Proposition One and how much it was about the interaction between two people and that sense of like the presence of another person or that togetherness with another person easing anxiety. And having thought about that, then thinking about tender hands, having been sort of designed to be interactive, but interactive at a distance and that like working on social media, I was wondering mm -hmm how you, um, I don't know how that, like how you felt about that transition or like that the previous work was so dependent on this idea of contact and then the new work, Tender Hands, was so much about like communicating mm -hmm. without physical mm -hmm. contact. Just for a proposition one has as a, it was a meant to be a participatory work, my purpose was actually I would be you know, standing in a gallery where this work was presented and I would observe people, how they re interact. But uh, although that's not happening, that hasn't happened, this, this tender hands, I, I just, I have to, I just found myself finding, like observing myself because uh, I was the one, I was the only performer performing all of these instructions and uh, because it, since uh, the instructions were just posted and uh, live stream online, I was not able to see how other people reacted and how they are following. So it became like my own very personal moment mm -hmm. somehow. Yeah, and also it was also like I've never I've never done like performances before, especially online on a mm -hmm. virtual in a virtual reality. So uh that was also a very uh, bizarre experience, <laughs> like dealing with technology and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because your background is more as a filmmaker, which yeah. comes through in the videos. I feel like the, the setting and the framing and even the fact that you're kind of in a different place for each one of them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, but I it, mean, yeah, like you said, because, because of my background, I was always the one standing behind the camera. Mm -hmm. And for this time, I had to be a cinematographer, video, videographer, and also the actor. So, yeah, that transition was interesting. Mm -hmm. um, what was the process of developing the exercise, or like, how do you kind of approach thinking about each? Um, you mean tender hands? Mm -hmm, for tender hands, yeah. Uh, since the pandemic, I've got more time than before, and I've mostly, you know, staying at home, working from home. So I think I've 
those instructions were developed and written on a really regular basis, like everyday practice. And sometimes I was able to write two, sometimes I was able to write just one. And, but uh, the, the only important uh, task for this work was just to constantly writing it. So I would observe myself or, or my cat or mm -hmm. my partner, how they like wash, how, how we, you know, really uh, wash our hands crazily after like coming back home. Those kind of everyday patterns and behaviors that have been, which, which have been changed because of the pandemic were, I guess, my main inspiration. Does anyone have qu other questions for Iveta? Oh, Holly, oh, uh, Holly, I think you're muted. And then I think Esther, so we'll do Holly and then Esther. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes. <laughs> All right. So uh, Iveta, am I, am I understanding correctly that tender, did tender hands begin begin before the pandemic or only after the onset of the pandemic because only after after i mean it, it it strikes me that this this whole concept of of hands and touch for kind of relieving anxiety at a time when we as a society are hypersensitive about hands as carriers of germs i mean hands have suddenly become this sort of dangerous thing mm -hmm. And um, you seem to be sort of, you know, directly subverting that with this work. Could you talk a little bit about, about, you know, how society is, is portraying our hands that we're constantly washing now and these sort of unclean vessels versus how you're portraying them in your work? Yeah, I mean, hands, the, the, these body parts, hands, has become a very dangerous vessel that for like that could worse infections and then the virus spreading the virus. Well, so I think I I thought I think uh, my first initial uh, motivation to start this work was when the pandemic occurred and then. I realized and observed, witnessed so many people realizing they they have had hands. Hmm. Yeah, because of you, because I wouldn't wash my hands every time I go out and I come back home, but uh, only because of this pandemic. So, which means the fear makes us enable us to realize that we have hands. Right. Mm -hmm. And also the realization that we like always have hands and these hands might be the very dangerous social and uh, vessel. And it also implies like a social, you know, social uh, regulations and uh, agreement and uh, restrictions. Those kind of new notions embedded on this uh, hands, uh, sort of also has influenced our, how we consume, how we uh, spend our daily life every day, like moment by moment. So that, that, I thought that was very interesting that people start thinking about their hands. Hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Esther, do you have a question? Hi, hi, Vita. <laughs> um, yeah, I hope you're well. And so the, uh, yeah, it's like um, the instruction one with uh, the end, you, you said uh, how to make music, right? With your end. Uh huh. So, yeah, I was very surprised because it's super rare that we think about um, therapeutic and behavior instruction with sound and um, I was wondering if it's a bit linking with uh, the, um, the music box you did for uh, uh, Noah in his, the Sony Perry Popolo Festival. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was influenced by Fluxus. Uh -huh. 
and it was based on music. Mm -hmm. So this work, as Sarah is mentioning right now, is called the Picture of Music Box in front of you, and that's also one of my recent projects, which or uh, in which I study a lot how to sort of um, create an alternative language that could be communicatable with a uh, aphasia patient in a non-English native or a non-dominant, globally dominant language speaker. So I, for this tender hand where you can make music, I think that's kind of, that I think that came from my own habit as well. Like uh, when I feel really bored, I'll play with my hands. And it's not really directly linked to this, uh, this, uh, the other work, picture of music, picture of music box in front of you. But uh, I think probably because of my background doing cinema, because of my work tends to always incline to utilizing sound a lot, ambient sound, uh, music sound. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That made me think of another question, Aveta, which is a very quick question. I've noticed a couple times that the video for Proposition Hands is four minutes and 33 seconds long, I think. And I've wondered if that's intentional. How long was it? I, I think it's four minutes and 33 seconds long. Oh, yeah. Is that a coincidence? Yeah, I think okay. that's a... <laughs> I was wondering if I kept wondering if it was a reference to the work four minutes and 33 oh no, no okay yeah but good yeah okay i'm, I'm glad to know yeah. <laughs> yeah um are there any other questions for Iveta? or anyone wants to chat questions yes Ji young can you hear me now no can you hear me okay <laughs> so. So yeah, first of all, thank you so much for hosting this talk, Blair, and then it's good to see you, San Young Kang. And then, um, I would like to talk about, sorry, would you like to talk about the proposition one hand? Mm -hmm. It brings back to my childhood memory when I was in Korea. As I remember, like the game, I think you, you guys should try that one. So the game was great to kind of break any kind of um, awkward moment with the new friends or sometimes you know I remember like I have asked my mom to do that to my hands <laughs> so the, 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 the things and I kind of feel like I am alive so also I just want to mention that the work is kind of well connected to our current situation with all the pandemic we are so afraid to you know touch things with our hands these days so, mm -hmm giving your hands to the other person to do the game things kind of like require not only um, courage but also like a trust each other yeah. so it was really really you know pleasure to learn about your work thank you thank you <laughs> and talking about this korean childhood children's game i because uh, i was born and raised most of my time in korea so uh the work i'm right now working on also uh, deals with Shiltigi, string figure, mm -hmm. because uh, Korean children, I'm pretty sure you must have played it as, when you're a kid, like when we went to elementary school, we played Shiltigi, string figures, and with some new friends or old friends, so I think these uh, Korean games are, have become kind of my inspirations and foreground that I, where I could sort of mingle my Koreanness and also Western perspective that I've developed in China. Um, Aveta, I was interested in what you said about text and sort of trying to manipulate the idea of instructions in mm -hmm. a way. Because um, mm -hmm. like you mentioned your work, a lot of your work deals with kind of the text and sort of trying to use it in a more, I guess, sort of a po like poetic text, mm -hmm. um, which is sort of the opposite of what we think of um, 
with instruct what, what we think of instructions being um, is there a way like how do you develop the text in combination with emotions is it mm -hmm. sort of do they kind of develop in tandem so I think because emotions in my video work stand for sort of the concrete because I believe uh, the abstract always requires the concrete to be abstract, to be able to be abstract and imagined freely. So emotions like really those hands or myself performing the instructions really strictly in a, uh, in a solid, solid way should open a sort of door for other people to, to at least to be able to imagine what they will imagine later on. And whereas text, I think since uh, English is not my mother tongue, I think the way I digest and utilize English sometimes is abstract or sometimes don't make sense at all. And I, I think I've just decided to take that part of myself dealing with English in a different way than other English native speakers to be uh, my other feature of my work. Yeah, so uh, I usually just see instructions written in English or uh, any kind of text written in English and then interpret those texts in my own way mm -hmm. as a non-native speaker. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are there other questions for Aveta? Uh, yes, Eric, you can unmute or chat in the in the chat box. Okay. <laughs> We're waiting on one question. Um, while we're waiting, I just want to remind everyone that, uh, like I mentioned, um, Avetz's videos are on the Arlington Arts Center website, which is arlingtonartscenter.org. Um, so if you want to watch the whole series, they're available there to check out. And they'll be up through September 7th, which is the final day of the exhibition. So we have a few more programs through August 20th. And then the last couple of weeks of the show, um, we all the work will still be on the website and the videos from the different programs we've been doing will be up as well. So there'll be kind of a couple of weeks where the show's there in a more um, solid format. Okay, here's the question. Um, so both tender hands and proposition one hands seem to deal with the relation between the hands and the owner of the hands. Is there also a reference to the relation between people slash objects in the way that hands are used? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I really ask that question a lot to myself because uh, uh, since I, I made my first, very first short film, there are always hands. Mm -hmm. And uh, I haven't been able to come up with a, a proper answer <laughs> for that. But uh, I was like thinking last night about why I want hands in my work. And then I thought, because I think hands are the body part where you could touch the other part, body part of yours. And also hands are the you know, the, the body parts that, that, that are stretched out if you want to touch the other object or other people in front of you. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, I was like thinking hands probably could be the most liberating body part compared to other body parts. And that's why they sort of they can represent connectivity or desire to be more connected to people or other surrounding leaders. 
Yeah, that that was the answer I got. And then I think does that answer to that question? I think so. Yeah. 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 Eric says yes, and thank you. <laughs> Great. Well, unless there are any other questions, I think that's also a great place to end the conversation. Um, and thank you, Aveta, for being here and for doing the performance for the show. It's been really exciting um, to get to work with a few artists making new work. I know it's a hard, it's a really challenging time to think about making work. Um, so I've really appreciated, uh, yeah, that um, the artists yeah. in the exhibition have been uh, interested in kind of making things that are responding to what's going on right now. So. Also, I, I really wanted to say that I really thank Blair and Holly and all of the staff working at all these night centers because it was a really great pleasure to be part of this group of position. Cool. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. All right. due to Blair. Yeah. Credit to Blair. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Um, and thanks everyone for joining us. Um, please do take a look at the website if you haven't had a chance to see the show yet and watch the videos and um, yeah, look at the other programs we have coming up and I hope everyone has a good night.